Hey guys, it's been a while since I've even been able to record any footage, really, uh, sadly. Um, told you guys in the past videos money's been tight, so, you know, builds would progress when I actually had the money for them. Um, about a little over a month ago, I went to go get a fuel cell for this guy, and I think we're going to go back to a mechanical fuel pump, the electric crap, nah, just too much of a headache. Um, we were going to get a fuel cell for this and the transmission went out in my Sierra. <laughs> and that was a big setback. I'm finally now recovering from that one financially because yeah, that was nearly three grand just out the window. So that one hurt for a little bit, <laughs> but um, I've been able to get quite a bit of seat time on the 110. Uh, I got friends of friends that have a little pit bike track sitting on their property. So um, I was able to actually take it to a track, hit some jumps, feel it out, ride a bunch of trails, and uh, just really kind of put the bike through the ringer and see how it performed. On the track, bike does great. The only thing that really sucks is suspension, but that's by no surprise. I'm like 190 pounds. So, um, you know, a pit bike that's built for 10 year olds, 11 year olds, uh, isn't exactly gonna support 190 pounds. Hill climbs and trails, trails it does great. I need a little bit chunkier tires to help with traction issues. Hill climbs, it sucks. I'm not a great rider. A great rider could, you know, work through it, but the bike just has so much power that it wants to wheelie every chance it gets. And the next thing was just uh, controls. I needed the bike to, you know, be more fit for an adult. So here we are. So this one, this is a Two Brothers Racing Tall Seat. Uh, my uncle has the same one on his pit bike. I like them. They're really not that expensive, like a hundred bucks to go. And then I have those ODI bars that my buddy Reeker gave me. I got some uh, of the Kevlar, whatever color you want to call those. I personally love these grips. I don't want to go with anything other than these. I had them on my DRZ as well. But because these bars aren't any taller than the stock bars, I got some Zeta bar risers that are actually meant for the KLX 110. And um, these are 30 millimeter. They have two different settings. One's a, I think a 12 or 13, and then you have a 30. So that should help bring the bars up high enough that I'm happy with them. And like usual, I buy all my stuff that I can from faster minis, so. So, like usual, I got lazy with the recording process, and uh, this has actually been like, it's Wednesday. I started this video on Sunday night. <laughs> so, um, I got everything installed pretty easy, actually, but there was one little issue I had run into. Um, the throttle cable, obviously, since the bars are so much taller and wider, uh, you have to get an extended cable because the factory one isn't going to fit. And on TB parts, or not TB parts, through Faster Mini, um, the only extended throttle cable I could find for the OEM housing was a 7-inch longer TB parts throttle cable. And uh, so that's one I bought. But I didn't need 7 inches extra. I didn't know how much I needed, but probably only like 4. I made it work, though. So as you can see, the tall seats put on that's like a two minute install it's literally just these two screws on each side pop off the old one slap on the new one it's good to go bars are also a pretty easy install the only thing that really sucked was trying to get the old grip off of this tube here the other one you know is uh still on the factory bars because who cares i'm not going to use them anyway um but these are the odi 110 and they actually are pretty much the same as the factory uh, KLX 110 bars, but they're just wider. They, I put them side by side, they look like they had the same rise. The bars were exactly the same height. The, these ones were just wider, which is why I wanted bar risers. 
and I didn't like the CRF 50, the super tall handlebar look, so I wanted to keep something like this. And another thing about, I, I didn't actually have to take the fuel tank or anything off, the shrouds off or anything. For you stop, stock carb guys, you might have to. You more than likely will have to. Um, but for me, I have the VM26 that came with my big board. So all I had to do was loosen up this clamp back here and pull this fuel line off, which is the feed line to the carburetor. And I was just able to pull this whole carbon free and open into this area and swap everything out because this just unscrews and then it all comes out in one piece. You just swap the cables out, screw it back on, remount the carb, and then route your cable up there. So it's a pretty painless and easy task for you aftermarket carb guys. Man, this video is like months in the making now and it's absolutely nothing special. But like I said, you know, with Christmas being here, I have a girlfriend, I have siblings, I have parents, I gotta buy presents for. And I still gotta be able to try and afford parts and stuff. So, um, I buy the cheap stuff and <laughs> I buy when it's on sale. So continuing the uh, bars and the seat and the longer cable installed in the last video, um, I got some more parts in, there's nothing really crazy. Um, but like you guys had seen earlier, the clutch cable and brake cables make so the levers have to be sitting too far inside the bars. And that was kind of uh, driving me a little bit crazy. I just didn't like the way it looked. I wanted it to be right. So I fixed that issue. And I got some extended brake and clutch cables. Both of these, again, are seven inches longer. So I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, it's not too much like the throttle cable was. I, I really had been fighting this thing. I mean, look at how much play there is. And that still drives me crazy. I'm trying to figure out a way to kind of fix that issue. I'm going to have to route them a different way and try to take up a lot of that slack. But that's been bothering me really bad. But we also got a chain guard. Uh, front chain guard, uh, faster minis bump start, the uh, timing plugs, and then some uh, rim locks and valve stem caps. And uh, yeah, so it also, there's the valve stem caps. I already put those on. And the oil fill cap, you have to swap the O-rings from the factory one over to that one because that didn't come with an O-ring. I don't know if they're supposed to or not because the other caps did, but it's whatever. So, like I said, uh, just a lot of little dress-up parts, stuff that I wanted for the bike, but they weren't really functional yet, so I wanted to get all my hand controls taken care of, uh, the seat and, you know, the motor work and stuff. The, to me, the absolute bare necessities. And then after this will be suspension and stuff that I'll get taken care of this winter if uh, I can get my hands on one of the black BBR stock comp swing arms. They're only like two inches longer, roughly, and they're still kind of like a a shape design, I guess, instead of the pro comp, which is like a traditional, you know, new style swing arm. I, I don't have two grand to spend on one of those, so. <laughs> so this doesn't take very long at all. Ugh. So uh, I think these are H5s. H5, H5, H5. And then these, what was that? It was like a two and a half for the replacement hardware that they give you, um, which just happens to be the one Allen wrench that is lost in my old man set. So I just reused the factory Phillips ones. You just got this little wire that comes up here that comes uh, with this. This is your bump start. So you'll unplug the factory cable right there, plug this one in, and then just ground it onto where it hooks up. And I think that works. I honestly, I don't even know. And then this center plug, this is the one that does come with its own O-ring, which is good because this is if this O-ring was bad, then it would just leak like all hell. That one's a 10 mil hex head and then this one i think it was an eight and the i think the factory 
screw was, I think a 15 millimeter, like bolt head. And then that was a big flat head that kind of wallows out the first time you actually take that off. So you get rid of two plastic ones and put in these metal anodized ones. I have a little bit more faith in them, a little more comfortable with it. So that's the easy part. And eventually I will get these wheels because I'm not going to buy different wheels uh, powder coated. And we'll probably have to drill holes for rim locks and stuff because these factory ones don't have the holes for it. So now we'll be going on to our cable system, which I'm honestly dreading a little bit. I'm just scared of having loose cables everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the easy one. Thankfully for the short time that I did have these bars on and uh, rode it with the levers like all the way up here, it didn't scratch the bars at all. I'm also going to take liberty of um, taking my throttle cable back out and trying to reroute it a little bit longer route. I think I'm going to sweep it probably somewhere down here and then off this side of the uh, triple clamps, route it through that hole and bring it back up here. Hopefully it'll take some of the slack out so I don't have a sloppy throttle like this. And then this one should be pretty easy. I already have it most of the way taken down. I just need to unscrew or take off the uh, adjustment nut down there and swap them out. This one, you can't really reroute. If it's too long, it's just going to be too long and it's really just going to stick out there since it only kind of just comes across like that. So uh, we'll just we'll just see how it goes. I don't feel like I really have to show you guys too much of this process just because of how simple and straightforward this part really is. I mean, cables, they hook up on one end, they go on the other end. If it feels too loose, try to reroute it a different way. So let's get it. Okay, so if you are struggling with the brake cable a little bit, uh, getting it off, just take out this bottom nut, unscrew it all the way, and then undo this one a little bit too, and you'll pull the cable up Pretend that nuts off you'll pull the cable up because you got to get this threaded area above this hole and what i did was i just kind of flattened it to a 90 and pulled it off it comes off a little tight and then you have to pull the cable around to the bottom side and then just slide it out because this side has a gap in it the other side does not so it has to slide in and then lock around these if you uh if you bend yours when taking it off just put this little metal piece back on this flange alone and then take some good old rusty junky pliers and squeeze them so they're flat and they match this gap again. So then you can get that nut or that bolt back in pretty easy. So we got the cable installed and ignore how I have my levers set be just cause you know, you're so much taller than my bike. I have mine aimed down pretty far. So when I stand up, it's a comfortable grab, but uh, with brakes, you know, you should feel a lot of pressure when pulling in, especially, well, mainly just with cable style. So adjusting these is pretty easy. Um, you just kind of play with these two bottom ones here, and I have yet to, where are they? I have yet to tighten these ones up, but it should have a pretty good pull on the lever because it takes a while for these drum brakes before you really feel the force of pulling the brakes, so... I have mine adjusted pretty tight, so as soon as I pull the lever, you know, it, it's pretty stiff. But I can, I lifted up the front wheel and spun it and waited to see if it felt like it was dragging at all on the brakes or if it was good. And she's pretty good. So um, play with that lever placement a little bit. I think I'll bring them just a little bit higher. And uh, tighten up a couple of my nuts and we're good to go. And then it's just on to the clutch cable. Okay. So we're onto the clutch cable now. This one's pretty easy. Uh, you know, same little style up here. Take that off and leave your adjuster in the handle. Set it off to the side. And down here, I'm a couple steps ahead. But um, you have this little bracket right here that sits in these two top bolts on the clutch cover. So 
you might be able to stick your 12 mil wrench in here and get the two little nuts off. Um, I did not have enough room, so I took these two top bolts out, got this mount loose so I could push off to the side and get access to this nut. You're gonna take this backside nut off all the way so that you have the cable exposed and then you just push the body forward or slide that off of the threaded area and just get the cable out. This is still the factory one. I haven't routed the new one in yet. Um, but yeah, that's how you do that. So pretty easy. This one will just pull straight out. It runs straight forward and then just through this little loop right here. So actually we can go ahead and pull this sucker out if it doesn't get stuck on my TV parts aftermarket carburetor. Sponsor me, please. I'm broke. One hand. New one. So, kind of told you guys how to take it apart. I just got to go back together. So, here's what I was talking about. It's been a whole five seconds since the last time I talked to you. Dog's freaking out because he thinks people are here. Back that nut off all the way. Take your little clampy clamp. Slide it over the cable onto there. And then, yeah, so do your stuff there. Um, this part's gonna be a little harder to do with two hands. Of course, it's gonna make adjusting this a little bit of a pain in the butt. But um, what you can do, assuming that this should work, is because I didn't touch the front nut on this one at all, you can kind of copy the adjustments, um, which this one's all the way towards the front. I'll let you know if that's an accurate depiction of how this is going to go for me. Well, fun fact, I put that one on backwards. So, um, yeah, your little, I didn't pay attention when I took it off. I have a hard time focusing on things, but your little bracket should be further forward. I had it flipped around. I'm sitting here wondering why the uh, cable is currently just face diving right into this. So. Yeah, put it on that way. So, now that I got my hand controls all mounted and I have them exactly where I want them, I brought the clutch one in just a little bit. I was able to get my e-start back up here. Um, just had to reroute the wiring a little bit down here. And this was kind of the best way I found for it to be mounted on mine. I didn't really like it in this area. I wanted it back up higher, even though it is more concealed and a little safer down here. I just didn't like how kind of annoying it was to operate the controls. So I was able to fit it back up here. Don't bother me at all. So I ran the wire on the inside of the bar and I'm gonna put a little zip tie right here. And then comes through the front of the forks. So then you can see when I make a left turn, it looks tight, but it has quite a bit of slack in here. And then you pull away and still. Plenty of slack. It starts to get a little tight in here, but it's not dangerous. I'm on the bar stoppers right now, so the bars won't turn any further than that. However, you know, since mine's a clutch, clutch guys know that you drive a car or, a, you know, a dirt bike, a lot of your bikes will have a clutch safety switch or a neutral safety switch, whatever you want to call it. So with this little plug in right here um what a lot of guys will do and kind of what you should do unless you let your kids ride it is you can take one of the pins out cut one of the the other wire further down and pin it and create kind of a loop so that one wire will run to both pins on this plug and that will be how you bypass your clutch safety switch on this bike. So then you don't have to worry about this entire harness that runs up to the lever. It'll just be a little plug with one wire that runs in a little circle to the other pin. Since it just operates as a switch, that bypasses your switch because technically it will always be activated. So now my next little piece of business is going to be yet again taking this apart and uh, trying to make it so I get rid of some of the throttle slack that you don't want. So 
I'm gonna sit here for probably an hour figuring out how to, I'm gonna manage that. Okay, I think I finally found at least a partial fix for uh, my throttle issue. I kind of feel stupid about it. Also, if you are going to work on carburetors and anything that contains gas, do not do it when your furnace is only like 15 feet away. I turned off my heat. The house is gonna get a little chilly and I'm gonna mop the whole basement now when I get done here. Cause I, I did leak a little bit of gas when I took the carburetor off. This is another nice thing about having a VM26 carb. It is extremely, extremely easy to take off. I mean, I didn't have to take any of my shroud off, nothing. I just had my one uh, hose that goes to my tank and the one clamp that hooks it to the boot right there. So the thing that I found out is this little gold piece right here is actually adjustable. Now I needed quite a bit of uh you know gapping for my throttle cable to actually be even close i still think i'm gonna have quite a bit of movement in the throttle but this was completely flush with the nut before so at least it gives me that much of a difference so now i can just kind of focus on how i'm going to route it and do it in a way that isn't going to stress the cable too much and ruin it early on and uh yeah, so we'll just get it all put back together now. So that is about as far crack back as it is, and that's how much it'll roll forward until it hits its stopper. So I'm sitting with about that much play instead of like almost half of a turn. So uh, yeah, I add some zip ties, clean up some of these cables and stuff. So now I have that much give. And I have that much give throughout like the full sway of the bars. So we're all wrapped up. Everything's all nice and tidy and looking pretty. So that will be the end of this video. So there will be more to come this winter. Um, I actually, I am hoping to do some work to the C10. So at some point you guys will see that truck again. But like I said, this year it was a big setback. Parts are pretty cheap for this thing so it's easy for me to be able to spend a little bit of money and stockpile some parts and then make a video for you guys on it like i said there's not much left um now it's going to be big money parts like the bbr swing arm the rear shock i wanted to get the wheels powder coated and then also my lower fork tubes when i have those built um because i'm not going to switch to a kx65 inverted fork or run the ace front end kit off of faster minis. I'm, I'm just not a great rider. I have absolutely no reason to actually have inverted forks. So that's why I want to go with the stock comp BBR swing arm because I'm not, I'm probably not going to race this thing. And if I do, I'm by no means going to be winning anything with it. This is just, this is my hobby. I like building, so this is fun for me, but I'll see you guys again later.